exact origins of this game are uncertain. There's evidence of the game having been played in Central Asia, Ladakh, Tibet, Manipur, and Mongolia. Hunter! In Manipur, the game of polo, or Sagol Kangchai, as it's known, has been played for centuries. It was in this form that the British tea planters discovered it in the early 1800s. The British tea planters adopted the game in this form, but they soon gave the game its rules. By the mid-50s, polo had been completely transformed into the game of kings. The high price sport needed patrons that could sustain it. In the late 80s, the patrons of polo changed in India. Corporate sponsors and civilian patrons stepped in and the sport saw a revival. The first actual proof of chess having been played comes from excavations of the Harappa and Mohenjo-daro civilizations. The game of chess was originally known as Chaturanga, or the four arms of a traditional Indian army. The four parts of the army included elephants, horses, chariots and foot soldiers. The Shahnama, Emperor Shah Jahan's memoirs, mentioned the game of chess in great detail. Although the game was played by the Persian rulers many centuries before Shah Jahan, in his memoirs, we find evidence of the fact that chess moved from India to Persia and was rechristened Shataranj. Today, while the battlefield for the game of chess has changed, the game remains the same. Vastu is a Sanskrit word that conveys the process of creation, an energy that provides to those that invoke it. In ancient Indian building, proof of Vastu can be found mainly in palaces and temples. This is Fatehpur Sikri, a palace town built by Emperor Akbar. According to a study, Fatehpur Sikri was built keeping in mind some of the Vastu Shastra principles. Today, Vastu Shastra and its various applications are seeing a revival. As people seek tangible remedies to their problems, they turn to Vastu for a solution. It was this particular game that led to the famous epic, the Mahabharata. The Mahabharata is variously dated between 1500 and 800 BC. So this game was known in India more than 3,200 years ago. Although winning or losing a chopper game is mostly dependent on luck, sometimes how the dice is thrown can be manipulated. With the passage of time, chess developed into the more tactical game, and chopper became the game of chance. As the dice fell again, Draupadi was lost, and with her, the honor of the Pandavas. The game of chopper is also sometimes known as pachisi. The name is derived from the Indian word for 25. The origins of playing cards is unconfirmed. According to one theory, however, playing cards originated in India and were known by the name Krida Patra. These artifacts from the Harappa and Mohenjo-daro civilizations date back to 3000 BC. Here we find small pieces of ivory with patterns that indicate that these could be playing cards. In the Mughal Emperor Akbar's memoirs, Indian playing cards or Ganjifa cards are described in great detail. It is mentioned here that the game was invented by the sages in ancient India. Traditionally, playing cards in India are made of cloth and are hand painted with natural colors. Sital Fosdar from Bishnupur is one of the few craftsmen who keeps this tradition alive. The game of playing cards traveled to Europe through the Middle East and soon factory manufactured playing cards were being printed on paper. The 
The origins of terracotta can be traced back to the Indus Valley civilization. The earliest pieces of terracotta are found in Mehergarh. Here, in the Bankura district of West Bengal, the art form and the uses of terracotta are both evident. While the creator of these pieces set out to make terracotta pots for everyday usage, it is these very pieces that joined together or adorned to create the art form. While legs of these horses were originally urns, the belly was a large pot for grain storage. As the creator of a terracotta form takes a piece of formless clay and casts it into the likeness of nature's exquisite creations, the title of Prajapati or God seems justified. <laughs>